Okay, so now you guys, today is a really, this is a, going to be a really interesting data structure. Uh, I think you're going to, I think you're going to be impressed. Um, the topic is balanced trees, okay, and there is um, a lot of different ways to uh, balance a tree. Now, of course, the reason we want to balance a tree is because we want good performance for uh, for looking up, you know, for uh, for inserting and for uh, contains for looking up. And um, we saw that we we've talked about the concept of a perfectly balanced uh, binary tree, right? When we did the binary tree, the binary search tree implementation of the dictionary, right? So, um, so the topic is balanced trees. Now, I've got here a list of four different uh, height balanced trees, and uh, we're not going to do them all, but just so that you'll know the common ones. First of all, we have what are called red-black trees, red-black binary trees, and this is the one that we're going to do. We're going to do red-black trees. You might have heard students in previous courses talk about red, the red-black tree project. And uh, the second one is called uh, Adelson, Velsky, Landis. This is three individuals, Adelson and Velsky on the one hand and Landis independently on the other hand, at the same time discovered an algorithm for balancing a binary tree. And so this has come to be called AVL after, Adel after their names. Hilson, Velsky, Landis. So these are, these are called AVL binary uh, trees. And they are also balanced, but they're, they use a different algorithm to keep it balanced. And so the difference between the two is, in, in terms of performance, is that red-black trees are faster than AVL trees for insertion and removal. But AVL trees are balanced tighter, you see. So in order to keep it tightly balanced, it's harder to do, it's, it's less efficient to do the insertion because you have to go to more work to keep it tight, balanced more tightly. But on the other hand, the lookup is better. So that, that's the difference between these two. It's, it's a slight difference. Um, basically, the big thetas are the same. It's just the constants that, that, that differ. In fact, we will see that in all of these, the big theta is going to be big theta of log n. That's what we're going to see. That's going to be the objective. And then, so those are binary trees. Now, uh, there is another way to balance a tree, and that is to have them not be binary, but to have more than just one data value in, the, in a node. So it's to have a, you know, several. So instead of these being binary trees, they're called n-way trees. And uh, the one, uh, and the, most common way to balance an n-way tree is to, is to construct what is called a b-tree. Now the b in b-tree does not mean binary, it means balanced. So this is why we've been very careful to label our projects bi-tree for binary tree as opposed to b-tree, which is balanced, which is not a binary tree. Do you see what we're saying here? Okay, so there is, in general, there is um, the b-tree, there is an, is an n-way balanced tree but what we're going to learn in here is a special kind of B tree, which is called the Gwen Wong B tree. And by the way, the Gwen in Gwen Wong is the same as the Gwen who's the co-author on this manuscript that we're using. So we're going to see, we're going to, we're going to use the, we're going to learn this. It, it is a variation. It is one way to implement a B tree that it's very nice. So anyway, this is, these are previews of coming attractions. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to start right off with the demo and we're going to grow a tree. We're going to grow a, a, a LLRB tree. So this is, the, this is your next project that you need to install, LLRB tree. Um, it's the LLRB tree stands for left leaning, left leaning, red, black, tree. So here again, uh, there is a way, there are many different ways to do red, black trees and we are just going to look at one particular way to do it. 
that is called the left-leaning red-black tree. Okay, so that's the, the meaning of the letters in the project name. LLRB tree is left-leaning red-black tree. Now, and what we're going to do, just to, we're going to grow a tree now. We'll, we'll do the demo. We'll do a demo right here. Now look, if this tree were not balanced and we, it was just a binary tree, what would the tree look like if we inserted 10 and then 20 and then 30 and then 40 and then 50 and then 60 and then 70? What would the, how would the tree grow? Well, 10 would go here, right? And then to insert 20, what would happen? It would go here to the right of 10, right? And, to, and then to insert 30, what would happen? 30 is greater than 10, 30 is greater than 20, so 30 would go where? Here. And you see what would happen. 40 would go here. 50 would go here. It would be what kind of a tree? What kind of a tree do we call that? It would be a degenerate tree. Are you with me? So what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to insert in this order, but now we're going to be inserting it into our L, with our LLRB tree project, with our left-leaning red-back tree project. And we will see what, what it does is, so let's investigate. Let's run a little demo here. And let's see, we will see that the tree does not grow this way. And so let's take a look. Okay, so here's our demo, and here we're going to run LLRB tree. So here, now there's only one tree, you know, we don't have, we're not, we're not going to combine trees or see if trees are equal or anything like that. Okay, now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write the empty tree. So W for write. Now watch what happens here. So here's, how did the empty tree get written out here? It's like parentheses B. Now what kind of trees are these? Red, black trees. So what do you suppose that B stands for? Black. Okay, so there we have right off the bat. Now, and let's insert, uh, value to insert, let's make it 10. And now let's write and see what this, the way it displays here. So now look what we have here. We have black 10 at the root, and then we have an empty tree as the left child and an empty tree as the right child. Now does everybody see, how that's, that's how that is notated. Okay, so now let's insert Value to insert, let's insert 20, because we're going to go 10, 20, 30, 40, and we're going to write this. And now look what it did. It put 20 at the root, and it's black, and R10 is to the left. Now, here's how you should visualize this. So the way this looks, the way this, you should visualize this is 20 is at the root, and you see it says R10 is to the left, is the left child to 20. Well that R means that the link from the 20 to the 10 is red. So this is 10. Now is everybody with me on that? This is the way to visualize it. The links are colored. And what happens is that letter, the R, means that's the, that's the parent link. Do you see what I'm saying? The 10 here that's labeled as R, that means this, the parent link is, ten, is red. Are you with me on this? Now let's insert uh, 30. Now where do, you, where do you suppose the 30 is going to go? Yeah, other side probably. That's right. And it did go to the other side, but now what happened? Yeah. So here, let's look at this. So what it did is it put the 30. It put it put the 30 here as we would expect, but this one turned black. Okay. So does everybody see? That's the picture. All right. So back to the demo. Yeah. Good question. We're gonna learn all about. It's it's, it's a little complicated. It's a little complicated, but keep this in mind because this will, we, 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 will, we are just seeing what's happening here and we'll see why and how it all pans out. But just to show you, I mean, just to know that that's how the, the visual of what that corresponds to. So now what was the next one? 10, 20, 30, insert 40. Now let's write this. Now what do you suppose? Where do you suppose it should go? I mean, if to the what? Like the other side of the to the right of 30, right? 
But now look at this. It, it did go to the right of 20, but what happened? This is kind of strange. Look, what's it doing? So the 40 was going to go here. I mean, the 40 would have gone here normally, but then there was some kind of a what? Some kind of an adjustment. Are you with me? So now what does this say it is? This 40, there's some kind of an adjustment. So what happened? The 40 went here, but then what, then what happened? Yeah, it got switched around. So here, here's what happened. The 40, the, you know, the 40 went here, but then an adjustment was made, so the 40 came up here and the 30 came down here. Does, do you see how that worked? So the 40 went up here, and the 30 went down here. Oh, and furthermore, what about this? Is that th what color is the, th the 30's parent link? What color is it? It's red. So it's like this. It's red only when you have one. Well, yeah, here again, we're just observing now. We're going to see how all that works in a, in, a, in a few minutes. Yeah, but you see, but do you see this? Is, now, what about, what do, you, what do you suppose, let's back to the demo. Now, what do you suppose is going to happen if we add 50? So let's insert. 50 and right. Whoa! <laughs> Who would have thought? Well, we'll be like. <laughs> what the heck is going on here? What happened? It Look. It looked like 50 should have been happened. 50 should have done what? I mean, if it, 20 is 50 is bigger than 20, 50 bigger than 50, should like would have gone here. But what the heck happened? Holy moly! I, I, I think we're going to have to start all over on this one to draw that, right? What does this What does this one look like? It's it's forty. What, what's, what's the root? Forty, and then a black link to fifty on the right. But now what? A what? A what? A red link to what? To 20. Does everybody see what we're doing, what's happening? And then uh, a black link to 30 and uh, to 10 and 30. So black to 10, black to 30, and then uh, I guess that's it. Oh, by the way, um, one more thing. So this one's red. Um, we're, I'm, on this drawing, I'm leaving out the black nil ones, right? So, so actually, the way this works is there's a black node to nil here, a black node to nil here, black to nil here, black to nil here, black to nil here, black to nil here. See, because those are all Bs. Do you, you see what we're saying? Those the empty ones. All right. Okay. So anyway, and on and on. So I think no more uh, sessions at the board. But anyway, check this out. Can you imagine what would happen if we did uh, 60? Where should 60 go? Where do you think 60 should go? To the right of, 50. To the right of yeah, right child of 50. I think this one might be. We might be good with this one. Well, close, but what about 70? I mean, the 60 and the 50 got switched around. What about the, uh, what about 70? Where should that, where should that go? Should go to the right of 60, right? You think it's going to, I think, I think. said the left leaning, so, you know, it's probably going to Yeah, oh, good point. Oh, you're starting to think good. Left, left leaning, balanced, blah, blah, blah. Ah, so the 70 was able to fit there without doing too much damage, right? And now what about 80? Reorganization. Re you think it's going to be a big reorg? <laughs> Insert 80, right? Isn't this fun? Oh, it, it did that little kind of local reorg, right? You see how that worked? 
little bit local reorg. And what about 90? We'll quit at 90. Insert 90. Right. 90 should go to the what? To the right of 80? At, should that be okay? Well, isn't it I think, I think. No, because it then it'll be imbalanced. It'll well. <laughs> it did it some kind of a little adjustment there, you know. Anyway, but you understand, here, here's our final tree. If we had just done 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 in an ordinary binary search tree, it would have been degenerate. And you see that, that, that putting them in that order, it, it's doing this adjustment to keep it balanced. That's the whole demo. That's the point of the whole demo. All right, so that's the end of our demo. Now let's go figure out what this stuff is all about. Okay, so now let's clear up this mystery. What we're going to do now is we're going to define what a red-black tree is. So these are the properties of a red-black tree. So now that we've seen it and we've seen these examples, check this out. First of all, a red-black tree is a binary search tree. So right off the bat, binary, we know what that is, we know what binary search tree is, so that's the first part of the definition, <coughs> right? And furthermore, every link is either red or black, and so we saw in the demo how we notate that on the printout, and every link is either, has a color, either red or black. And furthermore, every child that is an empty tree is a leaf with a black link to its parent. So that's what I was drawing here, and you noticed on that demo that that was the the, the, one, the, the leaves, the empty trees, the leaves were labeled black. So everybody, okay, so so far so good. But now you guys, here is what makes it balanced. The last two properties. First of all, no path from the root to any leaf has two red links in a row. Do you see what I'm saying? This, you see what, you see, you can't have, if you have a red link here, you can't have a red link here. If you have a red link here, you can't have a red link here. That's what we mean by in a row. We mean in a row on the way down. So you could have on the other side? Yes. Yes. And this last one is, is this, the, the last one in, in combination with the penultimate one is the one that makes it balanced. All paths from each node to all of its leaves have the same number of black links. Have the same number of black links. Now watch, so watch this. Let's start here at 40. This was an example that we did before, right? Let's start here at 40 and let's count how many black links there are from 40 to this nil. How many black links? One, two. Did, okay, so did you see that? Mm -hmm. Now, how many black links to this nil? One, two. How many black links to this nil? One, two. Did you see that? I'll see it again. One, two. <laughs> So you see, counting the number of black links, and, and how many black links to this one? One, two. So that's the proper, that's, that's what a red-black tree is. That, those are the properties of a red-black tree. Now, what's interesting about this is that there's more than one way to do a red-black tree, and up until just a couple years ago, actually last year, I think, even, that, this definition, this definition is what we is how we define a red black tree, and we did the uh, and students who did the red black tree project they did it according to they did it this way, and I mean to tell you it is complicated. It was complicated, uh, but there is uh, what we're going to do is we are going to put an additional restriction on our red black tree, and. This, this restriction is going to make it a left-leaning red-black tree. And this, by the way, is due, this is recent. It's kind of amazing that even at this late, I mean, computer data structures have been around for decades. And still, this, and it, this is a great advance by Sedgwick. He's at Princeton. And um, 
he has shown that if you put an additional restriction on red black trees to make them left leaning the code is simplified way much and the performance does not hurt is not hurt and so this is a relatively new this is in the last few years five six seven years he has come up with this all right and when I first saw this, I thought, whoa, we won't have to be so... So you might think this is complicated, but this is not as complicated as it used to be. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, so properties of, re of a left-leaning red-black tree. So it's additional left-leaning, LL. A left-leaning, first of all, a left-leaning red-black tree is a red-black tree. Okay, so all those previous definitions apply. But every red link is to a left child. Now see, if you don't have that restriction of every left link is to a left child, that means you have more possibilities that you have to take account of in your code. Do you see? So all the cases get trimmed down tremendously. So the code is much simpler. You might think this code is a little complex, but man, it's a lot simpler with this restriction. And it doesn't hurt the performance. It's really cool. It's really nice. And like I say, this is due to Sedgwick. Um, at Princeton, he has shown that this restriction greatly simplifies the code for both insertion and deletion. So I'm taking this, this is his, his algorithms. All right, so now here in this figure is an example of a left-leaning red-black tree. Now, we have to check to make sure this satisfies all the criteria. First of all, can you tell just visually that it is, well, it's obviously binary. Is it a search tree? 60, 70, 65, 80, 75 is greater than 60, 40, 20, can you, very, can you scan that real quick and verify that it's a search tree? The, the numbers are all in order, in the search tree order. And is it, let me see, what else, were, what, else, what else do we have to do? Every link is either red or black, that, by those colors. Every child that is an empty tree is a leaf with a black link to its, to its parent. So you see we put those nils, 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 and those are black links to their parent. Are you with me on that? Okay, no path from the root to any leaf has two red links in a row. So let's take a look. Red link, black, red link, black, red link, black, black. No, are, are you with me on this? And then the thing that makes it left leaning is what? All the red links, links are to, left. to left child. So all those links are to a left child. So it's, it's kind of like, you know, lean to the left, lean to the right, stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. <laughs> okay, anyway. So does everybody agree that this is a this satisfies the criterion for a left-leaning red black tree? Now, the height and here's what we're going to do. We are going to define the height of a red black tree just the same way that we de denote our height of any tree, except you you notice that we are not including the bottommost row of nils. Are you with me on that? So this is going to be our definition of the height of a red-black tree. Is everybody with me on this? So the height, height of this one is 6. Are we good? Now, there is a, an, a property that comes about straight from one of these criterion. Let's go back and look at this. It says, the last one, it says what? All paths from each node to all its leaves have the same number of black links. We should check that real quick. So how many, bla how many black links are there between the 60 and the left child of 55? Three. Three. Are you with me? Does everybody see that? How many black links are there from 60 to the left child of 12? How many black links are there from 60 to the left child of 12? Three. Also three. Is everybody, did everybody follow that? How many links are there from 60 to the right child of 5? Three. So do you see that the number of black links from 60 to every single one of those leaves is three. Yeah, question? So the leaves in a red black tree are the nils, not the last value. Correct. Correct. And this is like composite? Like no, this is going to be more like uh, by tree L. 
this is going to be linked. This is going to be an L. Your pointers. Yeah, uh, to tree that's linked well, what's going to happen is those nils are actually going to be, the left child will be the null pointer. So they, would, they, they won't physically exist. Okay, they, so will just, they, will just, they will just be the null pointer. That's how the implementation is going to work. So technically you could say, like, if you weren't looking at nils, like, yeah. the other pointer is two black links, two many. Yeah, yeah. This is it's a conceptual thing. You're right. You're right. You're right. But it, it is a it, it's the yeah. Those are going to be null pointers. But it's going to conceptually it's 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 better to think of them this way. This makes the analysis. This is for purposes of analysis and conceptual. All right. Now, does everybody see? Because that number is unique, that that value is called the black height, B H. So what we're saying here then is that the black height of 60 equals 3. Now is everybody clear on that? Alright, so now you tell me, what is the black height of 50? One. No. 2. Are you with me? What's the black height of 20? Does so everybody see? What's the black height of 10? Two. Two. What's the black height of 5? What's the black height of 80? 80. What's the black height of 80? 1. Now, does everybody see? Does everybody understand what the black height is? This is crucial for our analysis. Okay? So now, you guys, we're going to do some theory. Now, I'm not going to expect you to be able to reproduce this in whole, but I would expect you to be able to reproduce any individual step. Are you with me? So this is kind of a long, involved, it's kind of, a, a, kind of an involved proof, but we're going to, do, we're going to analyze the performance of, of the LLRB tree. And so... Um, we're going to start with this lemma. Okay, so lemma one. No path from the root to a leaf is more than twice as long as any other. Let's cogitate on that. No path from the root to a leaf is more than twice as long as any other. And another way to say that is, in a red black tree of height h rooted at x, the black height of h is greater than or equal to h over 2. Now, there is a very easy way to understand this. So look. Tell me, on this tree, what is the shortest path from 60 to a nil? How long is the shortest path from 60 to a nil? I think it's three, right? Black. Black. Well, I mean, path including red and black. I'm not talking, we're not talking about black height there. Just I'm, the shortest path from 60 to nil is what? Three. three. In fact, so you see it goes from 60 to 70 to 65 to nil, or 60 to 70 to 65 to the other, other nil. You see it? So that, that's the shortest. All right? Are you with me? Now, what's the long, now tell me, in a red black tree, what's the long, if the shortest one is three, what's the longest one? If the shortest path from here to, to nil is three, what, the longest one would be create, you, you, would, you, you, you could create the longest path by doing what? Having as many what? The longest path from the root to a nil would be created by having as many as many reds as possible. Right? Do you see what we're saying? Because the black height has to be the same. Mm -hmm. You see? Because the black height of each note has to be the same. So the longest one would be have, to have as many what? As many reds as possible. So that would be what? You'd have red, but then could you have another red? Huh. No, because you can't have two in a row. So it, what would it be? Red, black, red, black, red, black. The lo and so the longest one would be what? So what's the longest path here? Six. Two. 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 
the, the longest path itself from 60 to 40 to 20 to 10 to 15 to 12 to nil. You can't, you can't get any longer than that. Why not? Because the black height has to be three. Are you with me? And you can't have two reds in a row. Now, does everybody see how that worked? So therefore, no path from the root to a leaf is more than twice as long as any other. So you see, you can't have, you can't have one twice as... And that's what makes it balanced. Yeah, question? Can a, a link to a null ever be red? Okay, the, now remember, the leaves... Um, wasn't that one of our... Every child that is an empty tree is a leaf with a black link to its parent. Yeah, yeah, that was a good question. Okay, now is, so now is, is everybody clear on this? So therefore what we have is we have the black height of x, the black height of, of any node x has to be what? Greater than or equal to h over 2. All right. Uh, um, why is it The but hmm? no, no. in a red black tree of height h rooted at x, the black height of x has to be greater than or equal to h over two. It can't be less because then you'd have one that would be twice more than twice as long as the other. Are you with me? Is everybody clear on this? This is going to be the key to our to our performance analysis. All right. Now you guys. We are going to define a little mathematical quantity here called n sub x comma h. Okay. And n sub x comma h is going to be the number of internal nodes in a red-black tree of height h rooted at node x. So this x is going to be the data value. We're going to indicate that to be the data value. So we're going to define as n sub x comma h as the number of internal nodes in a red-black tree of height h rooted at node x. So let's do a couple of examples. You see that n sub 60 comma 6. Now, why do, now what does the 60 mean? The 60 is that data value, the, the data value of the node at the root. Are you with me? And the comma 6 means what? That's rooted at a tree of height what? 6. Do you see what is we're that saying? Itself the yes. Yeah, that is, yes, that's including the 60. Right? I mean, when, in the height. Yeah. Right? So it, that's rooted. And, and, what do we mean, and what do we mean by that? What do we mean by that? Oh, the, the 6 is the height. And now why is that 16? Because why? Because count them up. The number of internal nodes. Now by internal nodes we mean the what? The ones that are not what? Nil. Nil. See, so now we're going to conceptually, here again, this is conceptual, right? Number of internal nodes. So let's just count it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Just count, let's count them down by levels. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Are you with me on that level? 12. 13, 14, 15 at that level, and then 16. So there's 16. So you include the ones. And you include, yes, you, and you, we included the 60 at that top level. Now let's take a, yeah, question? Okay, uh, to answer your question, I think 35 is an internal node. Okay. Is that what you were asking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 35 is an internal node. It's only the ones that are literally nil are the ones that are the leaves that are not internal nodes. Yeah, good question. Is everybody clear on this? So let's take a look at this other example. What about n20, comma 4? So the 20 means we look at node 20, right? And the four, Now, why is that 4? Do you see that the height of the tree rooted at 20 has a height of 4? What? 1, 2, 3, 4. Are you with me? N, 20, 4 equals what? Well, there's the 20, that's 1. The 10 and the 35, that's 2, 3. And then 4, 5, 6 at the next level, and then 12 at the next level, so that's 7. Now, does everybody understand what the definition is? Yeah. I feel like in our previous discussions of trees and stuff, if something, something 
Were were leaf like were leaves always just the No, leaf? yeah, no, you're you are okay, that is a, actually that's a good I'm glad you asked that question. That's a good question. So here's the thing, you guys. These definitions with red black trees are so that are for our analysis. It's so that we can because this analysis that we're doing for the performance as well as the definition. You see, this makes it easy for us to define to, to define what a red black tree is this way and to analyze it this way mm -hmm. with these definitions. So these are definitions, and you're right; they do vary slightly from what we used to consider a leaf. Okay. Yeah, so like, actually that's a good point, like in our old system, 25 would be a leaf, mm -hmm. but it's not in this right. one, be because that, but that's because we want to consider it to be an internal note for purposes of analysis. Okay. Yeah, that was a good question. Is everybody clear on that? Then that is, that is a difference, there's a little cognitive dissonance there. You want to do another one? What is, what is N 50 comma Actually, what would it be? N, if we, did, if we, if we were doing N50, it would be N50 comma what? Two. I think it would be N50 comma two. And what does it equal? Three. three. Is everybody clear on what this meaning of N is? Now, lemma number two. N, now here's what we're gonna do now. This is the connection between the, the, the number of nodes Right? And the black height. So this is crucial to our analysis of the performance. So our lemma is that n of x comma h is greater than or equal to 2 to the, now what is that on the superscript of 2? Black height of h minus 1. All right? n x comma h is greater than or equal to 2 to the black height of h minus 1. The proof is by mathematical induction. This is so slick. Watch this, base case. So we're gonna start with the whole thing. N x comma h is greater than or equal to two to the back height of x minus one, right? And what's, so what's always the first step in the base case? Equals by the what? Base. By the base case, okay. So equals, we're gonna take as the base case that the root is nil. Are you with me? So here's the tree. It's just this. Yeah? All right, so if the tree, if it's nil, then what, what do we have for, I forget which is coming up next, the left or hand side or the right hand side? Take as the base case that the root is nil. Oh, so our x then is nil and, and the, yeah, okay, so x is nil. <laughs> That's just, we're naming the, the one. Now, I forget which one's coming up next. With a root of nil, how many, yeah, how many internal nodes does this one have? None. None, right? So that means that what? Which one of these terms is zero? Is it the left-hand side or the? Left -hand side. It's the left-hand side. Are you with me? And what's the black height of this? How many links to a nil? <laughs> What's the black height? Zero. Yeah. With the root of nil, the black height is zero. So zero is greater than or equal to two to the zero minus one. And is that true? He was by math what? Is that true? Yep. Yep. It's true. It's true. Are we good? Now comes the crux. And this, I'm sorry to go fast, but the, these are all on the slides. Okay, now comes the induction case. We have, now, you know this famous sentence that we always have to write down? <laughs> so we must prove that what? N of x comma h is greater than or equal to 2 to the black height of, a, black height of x minus 1 for a height h tree assuming what? It's true for what? We, uh, we prove that it's true for a height h tree assuming what? as the inductive hypothesis. It's true for what? H minus, H minus one tree. Height minus one. Is, is, are you with me? Okay. So it must prove that H is blah 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 for a height H tree using N sub W comma H minus one is greater than or equal to two to the back height of W minus one for a height H minus one tree as the inductive hypothesis. 
Now, here comes some uh, reasoning. Here comes some reasoning that we're going to that we're going to use in one of the steps of our of our, our proof for the induct induction part. Do you agree that the if the link from X to child C is red, that the black height at C is equal to the black height of X? Do you see what we're saying? Here, if this is, look. Suppose this is, suppose this is X. And do you agree that if there is a that if if this is red do you agree that the and and this is uh, this is child C do you agree that the black height of this is equal to the black height of this yeah because you don't count the red links is everybody clear okay do you agree that if the link from X to child C is black so if this is X and this is C, and this is black. Now, now what's the relationship between the black heights? <clears throat> the black height of this is what? One less. One less than the black height of this because of that link. Now, is that clear? You with me? So the minimum number of nodes in a tree rooted at X, if you have to have the minimum number of nodes of a tree rooted at X, what has to, what has to happen? Both children have to have what? The minimum number of nodes of a tree rooted at X. So, here, so now if this is X here, if this is X, and here this is the left, and this is the right, in order for X to have the minimum number of nodes, what must be true? For X to have the... The minimum number of nodes of a tree of a in a tree rooted at X, that means what? Both children would have to have what? The minimum, which means that the links that which means that the links from X to here have to be what? Black. Is that? Do we want it to happen? Well, because we're going to prove, we're, we're going to use this in one of the steps, the minimum number. Okay? So do you see? You see? In order for, yeah? Yeah, question? What do you mean when you say both children have minimum? Is it just like, like the second arrow or first arrow? Both children have minimum? Minimum. Um, have minimum. Okay, so n. Remember what n is. N is the number of internal nodes. That's what we mean. So they have a minimum number of internal. Of internal yes, okay. yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so now here comes the steps. We're going to start with the left hand side, and we're going to get it to be greater than or equal to the right hand side. Are you ready for this? N of x comma h equals by definition of a binary tree. Now how many nodes, well, <laughs> here, how many, how many nodes are in this tree by definition of a binary tree? Uh, you coded this, I think. <laughs> um, how many, no, how many plus nodes? Amount. One plus... N of child plus, like so. Yeah, plus how many? So it's going to be one plus, N, so N of X comma H is going to be one plus what? N of what? L comma what? H minus one plus what? One comma H. Right. So this is oh yeah L and R left and right yeah. Are we good? So by the definition of a binary tree, that's what n of x comma H is. All right. And this is greater than or equal to what? Because now what do we know about n of H L H minus one by the inductive hypothesis that that is what? Two to the what? To the Binary. black height of the left L. of L minus, minus one. 
plus. Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Plus the black the right. Minus one. Yeah, right. So one plus two times minus one. So it's one plus two to the black height of L minus one plus two to the black height of right minus one, right? Are you with me on that? Okay. But the minimum occurs when what? L and R are what? The minimum occurs when the links to L and R are what? Black. Are black. All right. So, what? But we know if it's black, what do we know? What do we know about the black height? It has to be minus one. Minus one. Yeah. So it's one plus two to the black height of x minus one minus one plus two to the black height of x minus one minus one. Are you with me? Okay, so what? So we do some math. What do we have? A one minus one, a plus one, minus one, minus one, and then a two times, so what is this math? Do you agree with this? Two times two times the black height of x minus one minus one. But then what's two, but th this two is what? Two, what's two times two to the black height of x minus one? That's two to the one. So you add exponents, and so what do you get? What do you get? Oh, two to the black height of x what? Minus one. Boom. That's what we we're trying to prove. Well, we'll have to continue this. Yeah, actually, at, think about this over the tonight, and we'll pick up here at the beginning of class next time. All right.